spoken to, from his coaches to his family, say that Casey is a stronger, better person right now. He's communicating better with his coaches. He's more involved with his family. He's in a better place. Now, how might the stress of starting in a Division I football game affect this young man's recovery? Well, the school has put things in place to help him manage that. He also has people from his recovery center that are checking in on him, sponsors in his program that will help him manage this stress. But Casey today, his coach Gary Patterson says if he never wins another football game, he will have won in life. But I bet they all want him to win on the football field tonight because he sure loves playing and he finally gets to do it again tonight. And Holly, Gary Patterson said the easy thing would be to just dismiss him from the team. The smart thing is to help him get his life on track so he's got a second chance. Les Miles on the other sideline. 34 wins in the last three years. He starts his ninth season roaming the sidelines of Baton Rouge. And in tonight's case, in Arlington, Texas, where his Tigers will take a knee in the end zone on the kickoff. And they'll come out to start at the 25-yard line. Zach Mettenberger, we saw him last year several times, 10-3 and three as a starter. And there's his numbers from a season ago, Todd. I'll tell you what, I think, again, he, he's had five different offensive coordinators since he left high school. You know, he's bounced around a little bit. Cam Cameron is his new offensive coordinator, has spent the last 10 or 11 years in the NFL. He's brought a real cohesiveness to their offensive system, and he's worked with his fundamentals. I just think he's going to step up in the passing game, and he has two outstanding weapons and Landry and Beckham to throw to. First snap of the game goes to Blue behind the big fullback Copeland, and he takes it out for four yards. As we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We talked about Alfred Blue. He's coming off an injury as well. Was hurt in week three against Idaho last year. Todd already mentioned Odell Beckham Jr. Not a great wide receiver, not only a great wide receiver, but a big return guy. Jason Verrett, a preseason All-American, will have his hands full with those wide receivers from LSU from that TCU secondary. Second down at six. Landry in motion. And now bunches in on the right side, and they'll keep it on the ground. And this time, TCU stops him for no game. Chris Hackett made first contact from the secondary for the home throw. This defense for TCU is not as big man for man as the guys they're going up against from Baton Rouge. But they are extremely fast, and they're very active on defense. They don't give you a standing still target very often. There's a lot of movement, a lot of shifting. And that time, Hackett got on the end of the line of scrimmage and came quickly into the backfield. For most of the game, TCU will be in a 4-2-5 defense. So the first third down of the season for the Tigers. Third down at six. From the 29, Mettenberger in the shotgun, pumps one way, comes back across the middle. What a catch by Travis Draw. Took a shot and so did Mettenberger. They needed six and they got eight. Beautiful adjustment by Mettenberger. Watch him look to his right first. His intended receiver was covered. He reloaded quickly, and even though he was going backwards and knew he was going to get hit, still had the presence to make an accurate throw for the first down. This might be a chance right here to go play action and try something down the field, try to stretch this defense. First down at the 37. Mettenberger changing things up. At the line. They've got Jonah Austin in there, normally a tackle playing tight end. And Blue got a yard, and that's about it. Jonathan Anderson with a stop from his inside linebacker position. The reason Alfred Blue is in there, again, Jeremy Hill was their starting running back. He has been suspended. Uh, he was a little. I'm not sure what it was going to amount to. He's dressed. He's here. He warmed up. But uh, like I've said all week, I would have been shocked if Les Miles would have played him. And that's why Alfred Blue's out there as the starting running back. We'll also see Kenny Hilliard rotating in there. Again, Mettenberger in the shotgun on second down and nine. And Blue slips and falls as he just got across the line of scrimmage. And again, coming back from a knee injury from a year ago, he still ended up with 392 yards on the season, rushing last year. We mentioned Blue, and we mentioned Hilliard, the third back in that rotation. Terrence McGee, number 14, is who checks in on third down. 
We'll see Hilliard in short yardage and goal line situations, and McGee is kind of the special back coming out of the backfield. Excellent hands, was a high school quarterback as well. Well, they picked up a third and six. Let's see if they can pick up third and eight. Attenberger fires this one. What a strike out to the 49. A first down to Jarvis Landry. Well, there shows the arm strength. That was a laser shot from Mettenberger. Landry was in the slot on this play. Very accurate throw by Mettenberger. Plant that back foot, get the ball to him quick, because he knew Verrett was going to come in and make contact. That ball had to be thrown on time before the corner could peel back and make a hit on the ball. First down, 49. Here's that play action Todd talked about. Loading and firing is Mettenberger, and he's got his man down at the 35-yard line, complete to Landry again. Pick up the 16. You know, Landry throughout his career has made a lot of incredible catches, one-handed catches, big stabbing of the ball. I shook his hand after practice on Wednesday, and I almost went to my knees. Incredibly strong hands, and you can see him just go up and snatch the ball out of the air. Good-looking opening drive for LSU. Eighth play of the drive. They moved it to the TCU 35-yard line. Again, McGee stays in at the tailback and gets the carry, and he slices through for six before they can bring him down. Elisha Olibo made the stop from the secondary, but right now LSU is doing exactly what they want to do. Uh, LSU has moved some guys around on their offensive line. They're a big athletic group, but the only guy who's playing the same position that he played a year ago is the right guard, Trey Turner. Lyle Collins, who was their starting left guard and probably their best lineman, has moved out to left tackle this year, number 70. They are a young athletic group. A bunch set on the left side, and end around is coming. Odell Beckham, first down and more down the sideline, and Beckham has got it all the way down to the 12. Now they bunched up those wide receivers, faked it inside, and then brought it around, and a nice run by Odell Beckham, and they're going to go hurry up here. Jason Barrett, Barrett knew the play was coming, and he tried to go down the line, but you see the speed of Beckham outran that corner to get to the Arctic. And now they keep it on the ground, and McGee's got it down to the six, maybe the five. Barrett made the stop. There's a the guy that would have added a lot of pressure rushing the quarterback to that another guy that won't play because of a suspension. Devontae Fields, who was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year and the Freshman of the Year in college football. Mettenberger standing tall, and he throws this one yep. all the way out of the back of the end zone. Good decision. He was looking at the tight end. He was not open. He was covered. Dylan Gordon, and uh, that's what you have to do here. Don't waste it down. Don't try to force a play. Don't it's throw an interception or fumble, <laughs> which he did a few times last year down here in the red zone. Yep. Four turnovers in the red zone last year, one of the worst QB ratings in the red zone of any quarterback in college football last year. Started. Alfred Blue back in there. It's third down and four. They can get a first down just outside the two. Landry's right in the slot. He's the guy I keep an eye on. Mettenberger looking at him and now fires the other way and it's broken up. No flag. A nice play by Kevin White. On Deshaun Smith. Got there just when the ball did. The strength of this TCU defense is their two inside tackles and their secondary. They've got a lot of veteran guys. That's a really well played play by Kevin White on the football. He gets the right arm around him. You could have maybe made that call, but he gets to the football with his left hand, and LSU will have to settle for the field goal attempt. And this is a guy that's never kicked in competition. He'll try a 23-yarder. At a great camp, they said, a red shirt from a year ago. Obi Delahousse. His first official kick for the Tigers is a good one. So a good looking drive stalls. They settle for three. And early on in the Cowboys Classic, the Tigers of LSU lead it by a field goal. Years, and he's. Just another one in that line. Well, the thing about Paul Hall and Boykin is they have different skill sets. So they both bring something unique and different to the offense whenever they're on the field. And that's uh, that's a pretty nice luxury to have if you're an offensive coordinator. James Harrison, the kickoff for LSU. Back deep, bringing in Carter. 
and Wayman James, the starting tailback. And Brandon Carter is going to take it right at the goal line. And he lost the ball. LSU's got it. Might be James Wright on the bottom of the pile, but a big early break for the Tigers. Well, this was poor fundamentals by Brandon Carter. He never had that ball tucked away. He was carrying it way too loosely from the minute the return started. I mean, you got to tuck this thing up high and tight. Look how loose it is. Not even protected with his arm, and that ball is easily stripped out and recovered by LSU. That's just, that's poor fundamentals by a guy who should know better than Brandon Carter. James Wright, the wide receiver on the special teams with a recovery. And now let's see if LSU goes for a quick strike here at the 10. Their wide outs are already out there waiting for him. Mettenberger on her center. It'll be Blue, the tailback. And he might have lost a half yard. Olabo from the secondary made the hit. A lot of times you think, well, LSU is so much bigger than TCU, they should be able to just pound them at the running game. But TCU has played teams that are bigger. And they played and beat Wisconsin a couple years ago in the Rose Bowl. A big running football team held them to 19 points. Last year we had them against Michigan State in the bowl game. Yeah. Big physical running team held them to a season low of yards and first down. And you saw on that graphic, LSU has been living by the turnover. Here's the play fake by Mettenberger to the end zone. Broken up. Barrett on uh, Jarvis Landry. Well, in both cases, the last time they were down here and on this play with Barrett, the defensive back is getting the benefit of the doubt because I think the offhand is on the body and that free hand is making contact with the football. We saw Barrett get away with it there and Kevin White got away with it on the third down in the last possession. They're making the play on the football, but that backhand is definitely making contact with the body as well. I'll tell you what, Todd, if they can hold him to a field goal here after that turnover on the kickoff return, I think they'd be pretty pleased with that. Third down at the 11. Mettenberger loads and fires, and this time it's in and out of the hands of Durrell. Had it. Probably should have been able to hold on to it. Kevin White, the corner, that's the second big play he's made in this game. Well, we talked about the strength of this TCU defense is their five defensive backs. Kevin White, watch him not give up on the play because he's beat. And that ball's in for a touchdown, but Kevin White never gives up on the play, keeps that left hand in there, and is able to rip it out before they can secure it. And that's just good extra effort after being beat on the play by Kevin White. Well, Delahousie. Hit from 23. This one will be five yards deeper for him. Twenty-eight yard field goal attempts. And this one is perfect as well. So Brandon Carter dropped that kickoff return. He won't want that happening again when we return. Six-nothing LSU. Adam, the routes have been crisp. The throws have been accurate, but the strength of this TCU defense is their secondary, and they've made some key plays when it's counted so far. So, it'll be Hairston's second kickoff. And Catalan and James back there now. Carter won't get a chance to drop another one. He was their main return man all of last year, so one fumble, and he's not out there for this one. DJ Catalan five yards deep, but he'll think better of that and take a knee. And we check in with Reese Davis. Hello, Brad. Taco Bell live Moss moment. Game on ABC, Georgia and Clemson. Aaron Murray finds Rantavius Wooten. Good scramble. Rantavius initially ruled a touchdown, then they marked him down. Georgia ran it in. I'm to give you an update on Todd Gurley. Initially, they said he was out of the game. He's on the sideline pedaling a bike after the knee injury, but he has not returned to play yet. A lot of fireworks in that one in Death Valley. Here's 6 nothing, LSU. Casey Paul in at quarterback. Javon Boykin is in the lineup as well. So they both start the game. Both captains, Paul, one hops the fumble and throws incomplete and almost intercepted. I think LSU was offsides, though. 
Anthony Johnson, the guy they're counting on to have a monster season with that defensive tackle a little bit quick before the snap. Offside, defense, number 59. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. First penalty of the game. So both quarterbacks on the field to start the game. And this first offensive series for TCU. And now Boykin goes out wide to the top of your screen. And Paha on the shotgun in an empty backfield. Remember Boykin was He's still out there. Boykin is still out there as a wide That's what they're trying to identify. Hey, this is a quarterback. He's not a receiver. Be alert for any trick plays. Remember, they were trying to groom him to be a running back before Paha was out of the lineup last year. He became a quarterback in a quick hurry. That one is fired and knocked down by Jalen Collins. The thing I noticed when I was in Baton Rouge on Wednesday, this starting defensive backfield for LSU is huge. I mean, they average. They're all over six foot one. And, and the guy who just made a play there, Jalen Collins, is a physical corner. He's a guy who wants to get his hands on you. The two safeties, Martin and Lawson, both big guys. Jalen Mills is not quite as big, but he's still over six feet tall. It's a big physical secondary working for LSU tonight. Four wideouts. One of them's not Boykin. He's out of the lineup right now. Went to the sideline, and James behind Paula and a pistol set. KC on play action completes it. It's a first down. Out to the 39-yard line of David Porter. Nine-yard pickup. TCU going to go with a little tempo. No huddle. Try to keep the same personnel on the field for LSU. That's, that's why you do this sometimes, just to, to know who the defense is out there and call your plays accordingly. Baja to throw again. Down the middle. Completes another one. This time, Brandon Carter holds on to the pass reception. Again, they hustle up to the line. And it'll be second down at about three. I'm sure TCU, one of the games they studied pretty closely was the last LSU game against Clemson when they lost in the Chick-fil-A game. And really, LSU kind of controlled that game for the most part. But when they got into the fourth quarter, the tempo of Clemson and the hurry up, they ran 100 plays in that game, really took some steam out of the LSU pass rush. Play fake again. Paha comes up firing to the sideline. And it's caught. The ball is loose again. And they're going to say held on to it. Brandon Carter thought he was going to lose another one. And he's right at the first down stick. What Casey Paha brings to the offense is his quickness in knowing where to go with the football. There's not a lot of indecisiveness, not a lot of indecision. When Boykin took over last year, he was a freshman. He was just kind of learning as he goes. He was forced into the starting position. He got better as the season went on, and apparently had an outstanding spring and summer. But Casey Paha is a, is a seasoned guy, and he knows what to do with the football and where to go with it quickly. 6'5", 230 pounder, and he leads the nation in career passing efficiency. You saw the numbers for him on his career. Got a first down here as TCU's moved it out near midfield. This one's tipped. Incomplete. Wow, if Craig Lawson would have had his eyes on the football, he might have picked that one off and run for the touchdown. The ball was tipped up in the air by Jordan Allen, and Lawson was just going for contact. Watch the ball get tipped, and if Lawson has his eyes on the football, he might catch this and run for a touchdown instead of just going for a big hit. Nice down by Jordan Allen to get up in the air. Knock that thing down and force a second down and 10. E.J. Catalan in the TCU backfield now as well. And now whistles. And a timeout was taken, I think, by Gary Patterson. For the snap, TCU. Their first timeout. Looked a little bit confused right there, and so they'll straighten it out on the sideline with a little over six and a half remaining. First quarter, and LSU up by six. Nick Sporting Goods kickoff weekend continues Monday night from Heinz Field. Paul Crest and the Panthers make their ACC debut against Jimbo Fisher's talented Seminoles. Number 11, Florida State and Pitt. Monday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Everybody anxious to see Jameis Winston, the new starting quarterback at Florida State. Supposed to be a very exciting guy, and uh, they got a lot of talent around him, that's for sure.
Here's the first running play of the ball game for TCU. It's a good one. Down inside the 45 goes Wayman James. Uh, we talked about the return of James. Not only is he an excellent player, he is a real leader and a vocal leader. Now, Paul Hall has become a better leader since he's come back, but Wayman James, even when he was hurt, was always one of their best leaders. And uh, he has got a low center of gravity, and he would be like tackling a bowling ball, I think. When you see him, he is short, stocky, and strong. He goes out. B.J. Catalan comes in to take his spot. Catalan's about to carry the load when James was hurt last year. Baja's got an opening to run, and he's going to take it. And he shows his wheels with a first down run. A big guy, but he can move 13 yards. That's what quarterbacks have to be able to do in today's college football. If something breaks down, in this case, Ego Ferguson beat the guard, and the play broke down, you got to be able to extend the play and make something happen when everything's not perfect. You don't have to be a dual threat guy. You don't have to be a great runner, but you got to be able to do that. Catalan was in the slot, and now he comes back in a pistol set behind Paha on first down from the 32. Play action wasn't a very good mesh there, and it wasn't a very good pass either as we check in with Holly. Les Miles of LSU told me before the game that his starting linebacker, Taj Jones, will not be playing tonight. He's a little bit nicked up. So in his place, Quan Alexander can play, but I've noticed in this series, they're using a nickelback, Eugene Micah, in there a little bit more. So just something to note, they're without their starting linebacker. Thanks, Holly. They have had a lot of four wideout groupings out there and some empty backfields for Baja. They have two runs now after having all passes to get to midfield. Now they've worked it to the 32-yard line on a second down at 10. Justin Macklin, number 54, is in, trying to get some fresh legs to rush the passer. Boykins back in there, too, in a slot. And now we've got a false start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty, still second down. By tie, the right tackle jumps. And so that takes him back to a second down at 15. Now LSU is going to their three-man defensive front. So they still have two linebackers. Now they have six defensive backs in the game. Anticipating pass here. They'll keep it on the ground and cartwheeled out for a pickup of only about a yard. It was Catalan. And now they're definitely in a passing situation on third down and long. Wayne Thomas, familiar name from way back in this area. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys in this case redshirt freshman out of New Orleans third down and long empty backfield again for Casey Paha and they're going to throw a middle screen and they got it complete to Carter and he's got some room down the sideline first down and more Brandon Carter all the way to the 11. Pick up of 25. Well, the guy who got the key block on this play was Boykin. The quarterback turned wide receiver. Watch him stay on the block and seal the corner for his receiver, Carter. From the 11, and Baja tucks one in there to Catalan at about the 7 or 8 yard line. Well, we mentioned some of the problems that LSU and Zach Mettenberger had in the red zone last year. TCU had their problems last year. They were 103rd in the FBS in scoring when they get into the red zone. Only 67.5% of the time did they come away with points. Now, Paul only played the first four games. He's in there right now. Let's see if they can capitalize with a touchdown. In those first four games, he was pretty sensational, though. Had 10 touchdowns and only one interception. They got a second down and six. They can actually get a first down near the one yard line. And now timeout. They don't want to waste an opportunity. Second timeout they've had to take in this quarter. And we'll take it with them with three minutes, 53 seconds remaining. Horn Frogs trail by six, but they're threatening right now. And now we'll see what he can do with a second down at the seven yard line, having taken a timeout. Again, 12th play of the drive, and they don't want to have to settle for a field goal like LSU has on their two drives. A lot of quick throws. The ball's not in the hand. Now, Boykin is in the game now, so he's a dual threat guy. So you have to be prepared for quarterback run here as well. 
In this case, Baja wide out, and Boykin scrambling, almost lost his balance. LSU's defense is too quick for that. Yeah. Yeah, no dancing. You, you can't dance against this defense. And especially that guy. Down to 295, and he's that much quicker. And that's Anthony Johnson, the captain of the defense. A guy that actually wasn't a starter in several games last year, but he had to play behind guys like Michael Brockers and Benny Logan, and you get on the list. You know, those guys are all playing in the NFL. Yep. You know, I'm not opposed to playing Boykin and, and giving both quarterbacks opportunities, but I don't get why you do it there. You've got momentum. You've got a great drive going with Paul. Now you get a negative play and put into a difficult third down. Paha uh -huh, to throw. Short of the first down, but battling to get within a couple yards of it. P.J. Catalan, who got seven. But now they got a fourth down and a long two, maybe more than that. Gary Patterson right now is trying to find out exactly where that yard line is. You have is. to kick the ball. I mean, there's there's no no decision here. I mean, Gary Patterson being a defensive guy, he knows how good this LSU defense is. You got to get points anytime you get in this part of the field. That brings out a guy that was a pretty good kicker as a freshman last year. Jaden Obercrow. Here's what he did a season ago. We got two guys that were freshmen, a punter and kicker last year. More experience now, and this should be easy from 21 yards out. And it is. So both teams have gotten deep in the other's territory and to settle for three. With 2.14 remaining in the first quarter, we got good news. We got a good game, and we also have taste of the town with Todd Blackledge returning. About 20 miles south of Fort Worth in Crescent, Texas, a new restaurant has been opened up in a Texaco gas station by a pair of veteran pitmasters, John Sanford and Michael Warren, and John's wife, Catherine. It's called Barbecue on the Brazos, and people are coming from all over the state to eat here. And if there's something Todd loves, it's barbecue. <laughs> Actually, there's nothing Todd loves. Love. I just meant cauliflower. They don't like cauliflower. You don't like cauliflower? How about Brussels sprouts? No, no either. Okay, there's two things I found that won't be in your soon-to-be-released book, Taste of the Town. So a 71-yard drive and 14 plays, capped by Overcrome's 21-yard field goal. And now Odell Beckham waits back deep. And Beckham will stand under this four yards deep, and he's bringing it. Odell Beckham weaves his way out to the 20, maybe the 21, and that's about it. So, let's see what Todd did have to eat on Friday. The popularity of this place is soaring because of the variety of incredible smoked meats and homemade sides. Now, for me today, it's the Texas Trinity of brisket, ribs, sausage, and then a special treat from John, burn ends, my favorite. I've got Catherine's cornbread salad and Mike's slaw. Time to get my taste on. Mm-hmm. Burnt ends. I love that part. Love it. Yeah. My favorite. I know you use some of those burnt ends and they made tacos for you guys too. That's a whole other story, a whole other meal for you from the 20. And on the ground, gonna be Kenny Hilliard getting his first carry of the season. I mentioned coming out Tuesday, right? Yep, Tuesday. Brand new book. Yep, got a book and I brought one for you. So there's Taste, yours. <laughs> Taste to the town with Todd Blackledge. Yeah. Not only everything he's eaten. But the recipes to recipes. all of that. We have over 100 recipes, great pictures. I mean, I, it was a lot of fun to work on. It'll be at your favorite bookstores yep. on Tuesday. Yep. Mine's going straight to Nancy all because right. she'll use the recipes. Thank you, partner. You're welcome. All right. So LSU now, second down and eight. Todd will be along every week with Taste of the Town. And every week, I'll gain more weight when I go along with him. End around. They tried this earlier, and Beckham got good yardage. This time, TCU does a nice job of stretching it out and knocking him out of bounds. Chris Hackett came up. Short gain on the play, maybe a yard. TCU, rangy defense. They, they can really run. 
And they're they're so in sync. You know, Gary Patterson has long been held as one of the, the top defensive minds in college football. And uh, they just are really on the same page in everything they do. And they have to be because they're not as big or as powerful as some of the teams they play against. But, boy, they are in sync, and they play great team defense. See if they can stop a third and seven from Zach Mettenberger. Fires down the middle, wide open this time as Odell Beckham, and he's on the run. And he's got a blocker in front, brought down as he got to the 49-yard line by Olabode, but it's a 26-yard pickup on third down. Well, these two guys, Landry and Beckham, this is the first time that they've had their top two receivers back since 2006, and they've had outstanding summer camps, and they've been much more consistent catching the football. I mean, there was never any question about the talent of either one of these guys. But a little bit of consistency with route running, with catching the football. But they have been outstanding in camp, and both of them off to a good start tonight. There's the numbers last season for Odell Beckham Jr. First down, a yard shy of midfield. Play action. Bettenberger wants a big one here. Long ball. Beckham's out there. Got him. To the six-yard line. Great read by Zach Mettenberger. It was a double post, and Landry Duke drew double coverage. He had his choice of either the inside post or the outside. I thought he was going to underthrow this a little bit, but Beckham did a good job of reaching out for the football before Kevin White could get in there and strip it. So in the final play of the first quarter, the long ball, the hookup from Mettenberger to Odell Beckham. As LSU looking at a first and goal when we start the second quarter. Watching the good read by Zach Mettenberger. These three defenders are covering the two wide receivers, and they're both running post. And so Mettenberger just has to see which guy are they going to double cover and which guy are they going to single. And I'm going to the single covered guy, and that was Beckham. Beautiful throw out in front of him, went to the right read, and Beckham made the payoff at the other end. Well, LSU's got it first and goal to open the second quarter, leading by three, with the ball just outside the seven-yard line. Now they've got their big set in there with Kenny Hilliard, the tailback, in the eye. And he gets the carry. Only got about a yard and a half. Eric Kindred came in low, knocked him off his feet. LSU's going to stay... I thought they were going to stay right at the line and run a play, but they are going to huddle. Football is a game of leverage, and, and the low guy usually wins. And, and that happens out in the field. It happens down in the red zone. That time, you, know, you got big offensive linemen, big tight ends, and Kidridge is a little defensive back, just slid right underneath the blockers and made the play in the backfield. And our flags fly in before the snap. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty, still second down. This one's going to be on Trey Turner, the right guard. They're going the wrong way right now. And now Beckham and Peyron Boone and the wide receiver core come back in, and the big set comes out, including the fullback and the tight end. Well, even though LSU has the lead here and, and has pretty decent control in the game, I'll tell you what, it's frustrating get down this far three times in the game and not have a touchdown to show for it. I mean, this is an important situation I think for Zach Mettenberger in this offense. Second down a goal that gives it off to Alfred Blue on an inside handoff. Flags are down as Blue got all the way to the end zone. Well very close but again a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think it was offsides on TCU and it was a good job by LSU not giving up on the play even though they felt the penetration by Matt Anderson they went ahead and blocked the play and Alfred Blue almost got it all the way into the end zone. And now the big guys come back out two tight ends including Jonah Austin, normally a tackle, and also one of the biggest fullbacks in college football, and J.C. Copeland, because they've got it right down at the one-yard line now. Offside, defense number 91. The penalties declined. Third down. Matt Anderson, the guy that's starting in front of Devontae Fields, who isn't Previous playing play tonight. Is under further review. And now the play is under further review, although LSU is lining up to get ready to snap it. Well, the only thing they could be reviewing is to see if it's a touchdown. Right. You know, I said Blue got close. I don't know how close it was. I think the ball might have gotten there, but his knee might have touched first. Keeps his balance right there with a hand. And looks like, wow, that's close. 
Another look at Alfred Blue. In traffic, puts his hand down there, his right knee yeah. touches. Boy, great effort by Blue, though. Hard running, good ball security, and then at the last minute, going ahead and trying to reach for that goal line. Hard nose run. 6'2, 222 pounder out of Boutte, Louisiana. Here's a call. After further review, the ruling of the runner down at the one yard line short of the goal line is confirmed. As a result, the third down, goal to go at the one yard line. They keep the same set and the same group out there. On third down, a goal from the one. Again. LSU trying to finally cash in in the end zone after two unsuccessful trips to the red zone. Leverage. Who can stay low? Copeland, the fullback, and he's in. The big fella for the touchdown. 270 pounds of fullback with a little sugar. He had four touchdowns on the ground last year. There's number one for 2013. Their best offensive lineman is Lyle Collins, number 70. They ran right behind him. He got to the second level and took his linebacker about halfway through the end zone. And Copeland was right behind him. Delahousie in for the point after. We got our first touchdown in Arlington tonight. LSU did it in fine fashion with an 80 yard drive in seven plays. A little over three and a half minutes they used. And a lot of it was Mettenberger to Odell Beckham Jr. And when that was done, the big fella from a yard out, J.C. Copeland, LSU 13-3. 125. I love fullbacks getting the football. 13 to three. They had some big chunks with a passing game, and then this short chunk, Todd. Well, he ran right behind their best lineman. Watch the block by Lyle Collins. When he did that, all Copeland did was just get right in behind him. He takes his man, the linebacker, Jonathan Anderson, drives him right back into the end zone, and that opened up the initial hole for Copeland. And uh, you got to throw those fullbacks a bone every now and then. If you want them to block for tailbacks, <laughs> give them the ball down there around the goal line, let them get a little bit of that touchdown. Eventually they had four of them last year. A one-yard plunge is given LSU a 10-point lead. James Hairston to kick. Wayman James and DJ Catalan. What do you think the average yard per touchdown run for him was? Probably a yard and a half <laughs> right in there. <laughs> At the one-yard line is Catalan. And DJ Catalan springs it. Kicker to beat. Catalan is gone. 99 yards. TCU touchdown. That's the way you get right back in the football game. Well, this was good running by Catalan. Poor tackling by LSU as well. They kind of got out of sync on their lanes. They left a hole open. Nobody really even got a hand on him. And Catalan, some good running here at the end, anticipating somebody might be closing, crossing the field, and TCU right back where they want to be. They're officially going to call it coast to coast. A 100-yard kickoff return for the touchdown. Over Chrome, the extra point. And in about 12 or 13 seconds, a 10-point lead is back to three. B.J. Catalog, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, on his way. Goal. 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. So in a matter of 15 seconds, back to a three-point game. Actually, TCU's officially only had one possession, and they got a field goal out of that. That's not considered a possession. <laughs> here, LSU's going to have the ball for the, the fourth time here in the first half. They've got a dangerous kick returner as well. And Odell Beckham, but he is going to bring this one for about six yards deep. Odell Beckham, flags are down. He works his way out across the 30 and close to the 35, and I think it's all coming back.
They'll bring that 33-yard kickoff return back. And while we've got a quick break, let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, I want to give you a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. Not a shining moment for the Pac-12. Eastern Washington against Oregon State. Under a half minute to go. Vernon Adams goes in for the Eagles. 49-46. First time an FCS team has beaten a ranked FBS opponent since James Madison beat Virginia Tech in 2010. Well, we had North Dakota State, Kansas State, and now this. So, week one, a lot of fireworks, a lot of happy guys picking off the big fellas. You know, when those lesser teams, I only say lesser, less talent, maybe less depth, yeah. that first game is the game they can catch you, you yeah. know, because they're not worn down as the season goes on. They're as fresh as they can possibly be. They've had a lot of time to prepare, new wrinkles, new things to try. Why those first games can be so tricky for people. So LSU is going to set up shot way out around the 35 yard line. Instead, they're inside the five here due to the penalty. Kenny Hilliard in there at tailback. But it's going to be the fullback Copeland who scored on his last carry. This time he might have gotten a yard out of it. Davion Pearson, 300 pounder out of Oklahoma City. And his defensive tackle spot made the stop. These two guys on the inside PCU are pretty stout as well. They're both 300 pounders. Pearson, sophomore out of Oklahoma City. Chucky Hunter is a junior, number 96, one of three defensive linemen on this team from West Monroe, Louisiana, of all places. Mm -hmm. Home of the uh, Duck Dynasty guys. <laughs> you love that show. Our family, my boy's <laughs> favorite show now. Some of the LSU guys growing the beards. I think they could join those fellas. Time out taken by LSU. LSU, their first time out. So they'll take their first time out with 12 31 remaining in the first half. They'll have a second down and David James is a charting tailback. Probably Todd just said to me, probably wouldn't be running back kicks tonight either. Brandon Carter with a drop the first one of the ball game. And he goes 100 yards to give us the score we have 13 to 10. And now LSU after that timeout deep in their own territory. The second down and nine. And again, flags fly. Ball start. Offense number 85. After business to the goal. Repeat second down. Todd, they, those guys were waiting so long yeah. at the line of scrimmage yep. during our timeout that they took. I'm not going to take the blame on TV, but they stood around so long. I don't think they knew exactly when to go or what yeah. to do. Well, and then they tried to change the play at the line of scrimmage once they recognized the defense. So that added even more time to wait. Now they're back up to the three yard line. Connor Neighbors is in there at fullback with Hilliard. You're looking behind Kenny, number 27. He'll get the carry and follows his fullback out to give him a little bit more room. Out around the seventh. Matt Anderson made the tackle. Right here is where Zach Mettenberger has to show maturity. If they call a pass here on third and eight, deep in his own territory, you've got to be smart with the football. Nothing wrong with punting the football and playing defense in a game like this. The secondary is the strength. Last year they had 21 interceptions as a defense. Eight starters back from the, the top defense in the Big 12 from a year ago. Got to be very smart with the football here. Got McGee and Blue both in there flanking him in what was a shotgun. Now he comes up to the line of scrimmage. And we'll backpedal into it again on third down and eight. Mettenberger from his own end zone. And he's just going to throw this one to the ground. McGee, I think he wanted to yeah. throw a screen pass to McGee. That's exactly what they were looking to do. Grounding. Number 14 was in the area. Fourth down. So. He just drills that one into the ground and we'll have our first punt of the ball game. Coming up with 1137 to go in the half. Jamie Keene really only started one game last year as a punter and that was in the Chick-fil-A bowl game. Brandon Carter who dropped the kickoff return earlier is back as the punt return man. High kick a dandy. Carter has a fair catch and takes it cleanly. But good field position for TCU, 48-yard punt, no return. When we return, the Horned Frogs down three will have it at their own 45-yard line. Triple-A kickoff classic, Virginia Tech and Alabama. The Braves were playing. They got 
Atlanta Motor Speedway is filled up. Dragon Con is going on in downtown Atlanta. I'm glad I'm not driving around downtown Atlanta tonight. Flags down and a false start. False start. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty still first down. So each team has had a false start coming out of a timeout. Well, for TCU's offense, I mean, it must have felt like halftime, you know, <laughs> as long as they were on the sideline waiting to come out and play. Please adjust the game clock to 11.32. The one thing we haven't seen TCU do yet is try to throw a ball vertically down the field. It's been a lot of short stuff, a lot of dink and dunk, mixing in a few runs. I think they probably in this possession need to try to stretch the defense just with the threat of throwing the ball down the field. They got a first and 15 now at the 40 yard line. Baja in an empty backfield with a five receiver group out there for him. Pressure coming from the backside. Casey got rid of it. Tried to drill it in there. Had two guys in the general vicinity. Brandon Carter was there and so was Wayman James as we check in with Holly. Well, as we mentioned before, Casey Baja was in rehab for four months and during that time he didn't pick up a football throw at once. The coaches told us that when he did come back to the team and start throwing it around, he was very rusty. His arm strength, his overall conditioning, he's really had to work to get that back. But, Todd, you mentioned they're not going deep too much. We'll wonder just how much trust they have in his deep ball right now. He's got a second down at 15 to work with, and he'll be putting this one up as well, unless the tailback joins him and B.J. Catalan does in the backfield. And he'll get the carry. Weaving his way. And here goes Catalan. Boy, almost had the same look as his kickoff return. And still Jordan Allen tracked him down. Pick up a seven, though. And that makes this next play a little more manageable. Now, Holly mentioned the rustiness with Paul Hall. The other issue for this TCU pass offense is receivers. They haven't really had a guy emerge as the go-to guy. Josh Boyce had 66 catches last year. The next closest was Brandon Carter with 36. So they're still kind of waiting for this receiver group to kind of step up and somebody step up as a go-to guy as well. Third down and eight. From the 47. They want to waste a good field position after the punt return. And Baja into traffic. And incomplete intended for David Porter. That's the second time they've had two guys in the general vicinity yeah. of where that pass was headed. And the feel that I get right now from the LSU defense secondary-wise is, is I think John Chavis said, look, I don't think, and we don't think they have guys that can run by us, so let's clamp down. Let's get a little bit tighter. Let's get our hands on them, and let's make Casey Paha throw really accurately into small windows against man coverage, and that time they got the stop. Here's Ethan Perry's first punt of the night. Odell Beckham is back deep. High kick. Beckham's already called for the fair catch and takes it at about the 14-yard line. That's where TCU will have it down three with 10.27 remaining in the half. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Only three teams in NCAA history have led the nation in total defense for three consecutive seasons. Who are they? Yeah, you know, we usually have one of the teams that uh, we're watching play be involved. So we'll give you a second. Two of them might be obvious. One of them is you got to really know your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to look. I would have to look that one up at the meeting this morning. LSU first down. Mettenberger loads off play action and zips it down the middle to Jarvis Landry. And Landry's got a first down. Pick up of about 14. Boy, when Zach sets that back foot, he can really rip it. And I like what I'm seeing out of the LSU passing game so far in this game. They just look like everything looks a little tighter, a little crisper. The route running's better. The catching is more consistent. And again, I think this is a situation where not only Mettenberger, but Beckham and Landry have a chance to really step up. And then the third guy would be Boone as that inside slot guy. Mettenberger 118 yards throwing so far this one deep sideline and miscommunicates with his receiver Odell Beckham as we check in with Reese Davis Reese Fred Sports Center right now is brought to you by Ally Bank Tim Tebow looking for a team again the Patriots release the quarterback after a lackluster preseason if he clears waivers he'll be a free agent again and able to sign with anybody he chooses Johnny Menzel also Heisman winner 
Six out of eight, 94 yards, three touchdowns. Back in the second half as A&M beats Rice 52-31. All right, Reese, thanks here. 13-10, LSU with a lead of the ball on a second down and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Copeland, the big fullback, sets in the backfield, trying to lead the way for Blue. And Alfred gets out to the 33. It'll be a pickup of five. But again, got a third down coming up. LSU last year, 40% of their third down conversions. So far tonight on third down, LSU's done a nice job of protecting Mettenberger, giving him an opportunity to make some throws down the field. See if they come after him with a little extra pressure here. He's had time to stand tall and deliver so far. On third and five, he does the same. Lofts this one to Landry. First down at the 45. That's just too easy. Yeah, it is too easy. I mean, he's got too much time. He's a tall quarterback, so he can see over the rush. A nice, clean pocket. He's got his feet underneath him. Good balance. That's one of the other things that Cam Cameron has really worked with Zach Mettenberger on this year is trying to keep his weight underneath him a little bit. His feet a little closer together, not overstriding, staying in a loaded position as a quarterback, ready to get rid of the football. And he just looks, he looks better to me. And I expected it, but he definitely looks that way. Cam has been away from college football for basically 12 years, but head coach of the Dolphins, longtime offensive coordinator of the Ravens. Now his first year at LSU. Mettenberger's got Odell Beckham Jr. Broken up at the last second. Kevin White has made three basically game-saving plays at his cornerback spot. You know what? I don't know if Kevin White got a hand on this or if Odell Beckham started to look to the end zone too soon. I just think he turned his eyes off the ball and was looking for the goal line before he secured the catch. But credit Kevin White. We've seen him do this a lot tonight. Not giving up on a play, even when he's beaten. Yep, you're right, Ledge. He should have had it. Yep. Well, there's a big one that got away. And it brings up second down and 10. That come out of there after that long pass pattern. And Blue will take it straight up for 11 and a first down. And you hear the chance of Blue from the fans here at AT&T Stadium. Alfred Blue is a different runner than Kenny Hilliard and Jeremy Hill. He's six foot two. He's the tallest of the backs. Has a little bit more of an upright running style, but good quickness hitting the hole that time. Running on the right side and picks up a first down. Alfred's got 31 yards on eight carries. LSU at the 200-yard mark. Right now, they've had the ball twice as long almost. But when you have a kick return that takes 15 seconds, that stat doesn't matter too much. Play action. Mettenberger finally got some pressure. They got to him. Dropping him back at the 46-yard line. Jason Verrett coming on the blitz from the secondary. Well, and I put this on the on the running back, Alfred Blue. It's a play action pass, but whenever you see a corner blitz, this guy has to forget the fake and make the block. Don't worry about the fake if the corner's coming. Give up the fake, make the block. See, that's why Mettenberger looked like he was surprised. He expected that to be picked up by Alfred Blue, and Blue just didn't have good enough vision on that play. Barrett, a preseason All-American, had six interceptions last year, but he also had 63 tackles. And he played that beautifully. Brings up second down at 17. Mettenberger trying to get a bunch of it back and through to some traffic, and this time LSU's got two guys in the same vicinity. Deshaun Smith, I guess the intended receiver, Barrett was out there with him. Might have been the first bad decision I think Zach's made throwing the football. Second down and long like this, you're not trying to get it all back in one throw. You're trying to get half that yardage to give yourself a manageable third down play, and he forced that one into coverage. Very lucky that it wasn't intercepted, and now he's got a third and very difficult situation. Third and 17. A bunch set of wide outs to Mettenberger's right, and he's getting flushed again. Keeps his poise and throws on the run, but high and incomplete. Intended for Durrell. Kevin White again was the guy that was the closest 
for the LSU wide receiver. Holly. Well, TCU coach Gary Patterson let me in the circle of trust last night and go to their defensive test. I got to sit in the meeting room and listen. He put a formation on the screen and immediately the whole defense would shout out what they could do. Then he'd ask each player to yell out what their responsibility was on that play. In the whole meeting, an hour and a half, only one kid had the wrong responsibility. They know what they're doing and it showed up on that drive. Allie gets around, doesn't she, in those yeah. meetings? She's a football, she's a gymnast, I and mean, that's all there is to it. That's she she loves the game. <laughs> she's a gymnast. Yes, she is. We mean that in a nice way. And that goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question for tonight. Only three teams in NCAA history have led the nation in total defense for three consecutive seasons. Who are they? Well, TCU's one of them. I know that much. 2008 to 10, Oklahoma, 85 to 87. There's the one that might not have known, Toledo. 1969 to 1971. In fact, five times in the last 12 years, TCU has been number one in the nation defensively. And of course, Gary Patterson's been around 16 years, 13 years, as in his 13th year now as the head coach. A good starting field position for Baja. He keeps it. On the read option for a couple, maybe three. Well, I think already we're seeing what we kind of hinted about in the open about LSU's defense. Even though they had to replace seven or eight starters, even though they lost these underclassmen that they might have been counting on for another year, they've got talent. They've got a lot of guys out there playing that have game experience, just not starting experience. Right. And, uh, but it's the same kind of fast physical defense that we've been used to seeing in Baton Rouge the last several years. Second down and seven. Raymond James asked Casey Baja for the play and then got the ball and took off with it. He's got the play in the first down and lost the ball at the end. Let's see, was he down? Yeah, I think he was down. The ground can't cause a fumble in that situation. He either asked Baja for the play or the snap count. He got the ball about a second later and ripped off 15 yards and a first down. Beautiful block by their leader up there on the offensive line, Eric Tausch, the right guard, really collapsed that play down. Now, Baja is going to float one out, completes. Hasn't got one to a tight end tonight until that one, Griffin Gilbert. Gilbert, not the biggest tight end, more like a glorified wide receiver, 6'5", 220 pounder. But they got positive yardage and it's second down and three. Catalan on the inside. And this should be good enough for a first down as well. One of the key matchups for TCU in this game, one of the big questions that their coaches had, how would our center and two guards, Joey Hunt the center, James Dunbar, Eric Tosh, how would those guys block the inside tackles of LSU? Ego Ferguson and Anthony Johnson. And in the last couple plays, those three guys on the inside of the offensive line have uh, done a very nice job. Everybody looks to the sideline now and first down at the 38-yard line. Baja in the gun, three wide outs to the top. They'll keep it on the ground, though. This time, not so good blocking on the inside. That time they did. <laughs> Ego Ferguson. Now, Ego Ferguson and Anthony Johnson are the two guys. Here's Ferguson right here. Big, physical, powerful guy. He's just going to take the tackle, throw him out of the way, and make the play in there. Those two guys are the next two stars on the inside. I mean, LSU has had a lot of defensive linemen come through there, make their way to the NFL, and these are the next two guys ready to step up. Now that the backfield again on second down and 10. Baja and five wide outs, and LSU's going to bring a blitz. Got to get rid of it. And did on a crossing pattern to Carter. But it's incomplete as he dropped it. He might have had a little bit of room to run had he held on to that. Boy, Anthony Johnson read that, too. He, he hit the center and then released out anticipating screen. Watch him hit the center and then release outside. He got picked off a little bit, but he read that play. That's pretty impressive for a 295 guy lined up right over the center. Absolutely. 
We'll get a breather. Casey Paha won't get a breather, though, probably. Third down and 10. LSU fans coming to life. Devon Boykin in the lineup again as one of the wideouts. Curry trying to get the snap. Baja, they throw the screen again, but LSU's all over it. Only a couple yard gain. Mikey Eugene made the stop. Mikey Eugene made the stop, but Ego Ferguson, that other defensive tackle, read that screen. So on back to back plays, we've seen the two defensive tackles read the play, stop rushing the passer, and go chase down a play. Well, that's uh, that's good coaching. John Chavis, defensive coordinator, his fifth year at LSU after a long career at Tennessee, has got him playing. Ethan Perry, his first punt was high and deep. And Odell Beckham had to call for a fair catch to see if he can do it again. And he does. And Odell Beckham's got to get out of the way of this one. It actually takes a positive bounce for the Tigers. Goes out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. ESPN 2's got a special Labor Day weekend edition of Sunday Night Baseball tomorrow as the Mets and the Nationals face off in a division matchup. Sunday Night Baseball, Mets, Nationals tomorrow, 8 Eastern on ESPN 2 and live on Watch ESPN. The Rangers and Twins are playing about 300 yards from where we are on a nice sticky night outside. And it's 1 1 in the eighth inning. I think the Twins broke up a no hitter last night on the Rangers, if I'm not mistaken. But so there's a lot of activity right here in Arlington tonight, too. We talked about Atlanta. You want to talk about a lot of bodies in the uh, couple square miles that we're at right here at AT&T Stadium. First down, LSU. Time getting short here before halftime. And Blue's going to be hit for a loss. Loss of a couple. Sam Carter, one of the captains on the defense, the strong safety, made the stop. Carter more, almost more like a linebacker yeah. in that five defensive back set for TCU. Was a dual threat quarterback in high school, came to TCU as a, as a quarterback, one of Gary Patterson's really favorite players. I mean, he's kind of the quarterback of their defense, playing that hybrid position, that time had outstanding leverage on the play. Brings up second and 11. Mettenberger straight drop, fires near side. What a catch by Odell Beckham. As he went high with good coverage by Verrett, still snagged that one as he picked up seven. Yeah, Verrett was in pretty good position. And if Beckham doesn't really make an aggressive attempt to catch this and jump for the football, Verrett's going to get in there and get a hand on it. That was tight coverage and excellent work by Beckham. Brings up a third down. And four. Mattenberger zips a slant complete to Landry. He's got a first down. And they still don't have him down. He got out near the 47 yard line. And I mentioned those strong hands of Jarvis Landry. His ability to just kind of pluck the ball out of the air in traffic. Pretty impressive. Great throw on time. And Landry able to catch that thing going north and south and add extra yardage after the catch. His fifth catch, three of them on third down. And here's a screen pass that went awry again. That's the second time tonight. Mettenberger has just drilled it into the ground. Now that was Blue's fault, though, because he was too deep. was in the area. Second down. I mean, he's got to stay back closer to the line of scrimmage so that Mettenberger has a place to throw. Watch Blue get too far down the field on this screen. He gets knocked behind the play. Now he just got grabbed. I mean, there was just nowhere to go for Mettenberger. I saw where he was when it, when it ended. Well, he had help getting there. I'm not sure that didn't happen to McGee the first time they tried that down near the goal line. Yeah. There's just too much congestion in there. McGee's in there right now, as a matter of fact, with Mettenberger in the backfield on second down and 10. We're under two minutes. In the half, low snap in the shotgun. Zach fires deep sideline. Oh, what a catch. Landry again. 14 more yards. Boys, he had a big first half. That's just a big time throw and catch against tight coverage. I mean, there's two defenders over there, and the ball can only be thrown in one spot, and Landry goes and gets it. Landry caught 56 balls, five for touchdowns, both were highs for LSU last year, and he's off to a sensational start here in the opener in 2013. 
I think LSU has to find some way to throw the ball inside to either a tight end or a back working on a linebacker. Get a matchup inside. Mattenberger. Deep sideline. Beckham through his hands. That was catchable too. Kevin White was covering. Covering all of college football is Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got? All right, Brad, got the BMW halftime report coming your way. Georgia and Clemson playing a thriller on ABC. We'll get you up to date on that. Wait do you see the touchdown pass Taj Boyd just threw. Johnny Football has returned the latest on that. And also, the Beavers are bumming after their date with Eastern Washington. All right, Reese, see you in a minute, 43 seconds. Second down and 10 for LSU, leading by three here. In the late stages of the second quarter, they'll keep it on the ground. Alfred Blue, and he's got some room off tackle this time. Inside the 35, near the 33, Barrett had to make the stop. Busy Nine corners time tonight. And timeout the taken time by out. LSU. 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout here. Minute 34 remaining in the half. Cowboys classic 13 10 LSU out in front. Mettenberger now will be in an empty backfield with a five wide receiver group. Important third down here. Even if they want to get it in field goal range, if they don't get the first down, they might be able to get a long kick out of this. Mettenberger flushed out of the pocket. Is he going to run with it? He will, and he just got there. Good decision. Alfred Blue tried to adjust to the scramble and go deep, but Chris Hackett was right with him, number one, and Mettenberger saw that and realized, I got a better chance of getting to the first down than making this tough throw. Good initial coverage by TCU, and then Mettenberger, instead of trying to loft it to Alfred Blue, he just ran it for the first down. The other thing Zach told us yesterday, he worked so hard on his footwork, not only in the pocket, but just doing drills to try to become a little bit quicker. That was just quick enough. Last year, he might not have got to that yeah. stick. A lot of ladder drills, footwork drills, a lot of jumping rope. Now they've still got plenty of opportunity to work. Only one time out remaining, but a minute 27 to go from the 28s. Blue straight up the middle. And Albert Blue blasts his way down inside the 12-yard line. His best run of the night, 17-yard pickup. Well, Lyle Collins again. Watch number 70 crash down the inside. They pulled the other guard, Trey Turner, around. A little power football. And now back to the air and to the end zone. High and flags down this time. Verrett's going to be called for pass interference. They've had some close ones yeah. before. See, you throw that ball high so your receiver can go up and either he catches it or nobody catches it. Defensive pass interference, number two. Foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. But Ver Verrett made contact before Beckham could jump. See, here was the contact, and Beckham did a nice job of drawing that contact and getting the flag. It's the correct call. He couldn't go up and get it because there was contact by Verrett. So it's first and goal. Verrett has a look at the big screen to look at it. It's at the two-yard line. Do you give it to your big fullback again? He got you a one-yarder earlier. J.C. Copeland, they'll lead the way for Blue, and he's hitting the backfield and loses yardage. Paul Dawson made first contact from his linebacker spot. Nice play. Yeah, good penetration that time. Staying low, getting leverage, getting underneath those big bodies. They lose yardage on that one. The 11th play of the drive coming up. Gary Patterson hoping that his defense can come up with a stop and force a field goal. With less than a half minute to go in the first half. Danny Hilliard, second man through. Hilliard, he's going to be short as well. Remember, LSU's only got one timeout. Ball comes on the ground. Call the timeout. Less is <laughs> all the way down to the seven yard Third line. Final timeout. A 30 second timeout. And that's the final timeout for LSU. So the things we were looking for tonight, Todd, I know the first thing you talked about is that guy, Zach Mettenberger, and I yeah. think he's come through pretty well. He's I think he has. done a nice job. He has. He's thrown the ball well. He's looked decisive. His footwork looks better. He's been accurate. Only a couple bad decisions, and I think Landry and Beckham have both 
you know, proven that they're going to be big time receivers in the SEC this year. I think the one thing they're missing, even down here around the goal line, is Travis Dixon, their starting tight end, is not playing. They don't have that kind of a threat in the middle of the field right now, and they haven't thrown to a back out of the backfield. But the throws to the wide receivers, Zach Mettenberger has been really good. They've got a golden opportunity right here to put another touchdown on the board. You don't really want to settle for a field goal. TCU's here. got to make a play here because yeah. if they do, that's going to carry over Absolutely. to the third quarter. They can get another stop and force three. Really, second down was the throw down. You know, now you're at third down and you almost have to throw the football. You've tried to run inside two times and you've gained virtually nothing. But who do you go to and play action? Now they're going to go with their wide receiver group. So on third down inside the five, they're going to go with their three wide receiver group. Including Boone. Landry's been the big play guy. And now Blue comes out of the backfield as the extra receiver at the bottom of your screen from the two yard line. And flags fly in. And they'll have more room to work now. Uh, that, that's ridiculous. You call timeout. You call your play and then you get a delay a game. I mean, how do you get a delay a game out of a timeout, out of your own timeout? Man, that's just, that, that can't happen. So now it's all the way back to the seven yard line. LSU seven for 11 on third down conversions. Unless Miles trying to get the attention of the line judge, doesn't, third and goal. And was there more movement? I think so. At least Davion Pearson thought so. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Still third down. LSU's imploding down yeah. here inside the 10 yard line. It's not inside the 10 anymore. Out to the 12. Four penalties of the six that LSU has had tonight on the offense. Beckham comes down to the bottom of the screen with blue and a slot there, and then three wide outs up top and an empty backfield. Third and goal from the 12. Mettenberger, pressure coming, trying to get to him. He got away somehow and throws on the run. Broken up of the goal line by Chris Hackett. And now LSU's got a kick with five seconds remaining. Pretty good job by Mettenberger buying some time. Excellent coverage. Four-man rush, seven guys in coverage. They had everything bottled up. Nowhere to go for Mettenberger. Number 70's offense helmet came off through play. With five seconds to go. LSU is out of timeouts. That's a 10 second runoff. It's halftime. Oh my goodness. The runoff of 10 seconds takes away the five they had left to try to get a field goal. <laughs> that was a mess for LSU right there. And Collins tried to pick up his helmet really fast to put it back on, hoping nobody saw it. They caught him anyway. That but, guy kept his on. Uh, <laughs> the crowd. Oh my. That's something. Yeah, that's an ugly way to end the half if you're LSU. It could have been 20 to 13 at worst. 16, uh, excuse me. 20 to 10. It could have been 20 to 10 at worst. 16 to 10. Wait a minute now. They're changing. They're saying the clock was stopped because of an incomplete Correction. pass. There was an incomplete pass on the play. Well, they better tell the TCU their whole team. Ago, fourth down. The whole TCU team is in the locker room. <laughs> And the LSU fans are all going, come on back, fellas. Come on back. This is the most bizarre minute Coach, of football I've seen in a long time. Well, we have the Big Ten officiating crew, and they're trying to explain it to Gary Patterson right now. <laughs> the Here comes just... the Horn Frogs. <laughs> well, he didn't come out at the beginning in the yeah. open of our show when right. we wanted him to, so we'll bring him back out. Save the Gatorade. We'll get it in a little bit. <laughs> wow. And now another flag has just flown in as we're probably going to have an unsportsmanlike conduct on 
TCU either bench or players. I don't know. I'm going to let John O'Neill straighten all this out when he turns his mic on. All right. So about a hundred Horn Frogs just came back out of the tunnel. We've something. got a couple on the field that I think were penalized for some reason. Yeah, something's going on with Davian Pearson, number 57. During the dead ball, the unsportsmanlike conduct from the 96 defense. Five yards, replay fourth down. Chucky Hunter is the guy they called it on. I gotta try to figure out where the line of scrimmage is. So do they. We all need a halftime break. <laughs> Players, <laughs> officials, announcers, everybody. <laughs> Good grief. Oh man. So LSU is gonna have a chance for a field goal. And Delahousie, two for two tonight. This will be a 23-yard attempt. He hit a 23-yard earlier. I don't know if TCU is gonna line anybody up on defense to try to block this or not. Finally, a few of them getting their stance. Here's a kick with five seconds now remaining in the half. And it's good. And Gary Patterson is not a happy coach. So it is 16 to 10 at halftime. Nonetheless, what we said is if they didn't give up a touchdown, it would be a victory of sorts. But now that sprint to the locker room to get a drink is going to seem <laughs> A lot warmer when they get in that locker room after back-to-back -back sprints by the whole TCU team. Let's check in with Holly. at and Stadium, everybody. Brad Nessler and Ty Blackledge. Partner, LSU had 12 plays in the red zone. What'd they yards. get out of it? 12 yards. <laughs> I mean, four possessions, one touchdown, three field goals. It's hard to win against a, a quality opponent when you're that inefficient in the red zone. And, uh, you know, for TCU, even though they only gained 109 yards, they're still one touchdown away from being in front of the game. And so they get the ball to start here. I think they have to find a way to stretch the field. They've got to get some big yardage plays because they had none in the first half. They couldn't get their passing game going downfield is for sure. But they did do a nice job on returns. And here comes Catalan who had the 100 yarder and bringing this one out close to the 30 yard line as we check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. TCU coach Gary Patterson did accept the officials' explanations of what went on at the end of that half, but what he's not accepting is how his offense is performing. He said, we only had 109 yards in that first half. It's not good enough. We didn't have the ball enough. Our defense did not get off the field in passing downs. We have got to contest every single throw. But he was very calm. He was confident that his defense is doing a nice job in the red zone for the most part. But he wanted to make sure that I gave a shout out to his two sons who are watching at home. Kate and Blake who were going to come. Couldn't make it because Blake hurt his knee. So a concerned father at the half. Just as concerned for his boys as he is for his team. He's got three sons. Josh and Kate and Blake. And Blake's the one that tore his ACL. So Blake hope you better soon. Paul. Now he is trying to go deep. But it's into traffic and it's intercepted. So they did what Todd said they might try to do. There's a flag down, though, in the backfield. Could be roughing the passer. Holding. Nope. It's not. The penalty's declined. Interception results in the first down. And Jalen Mills has got the interception. Well, a little bit of pressure. Paul Hall had time, but he just didn't get enough on this ball, and he threw into double coverage. I mean, I, I knew that they needed to try to stretch the defense and try to make a play down the field, but you want to save those for when you get single coverage opportunities. That time, Casey Paul Hall made a bad decision throwing where two defenders were. And the guy that made the interception, Jalen Mills, played his high school ball about 20 miles from the stadium. So he comes up with a big play to open the third quarter, and that's LSU. From the 34. And after Blue is going to be dropped for a four yard loss by Paul Dawson. The LSU does a nice job with their linebackers of running through. You know, they, they read the play quickly and then they run through behind the blocks. You know, they're not the biggest guys, but again, they're quick, they take good angles, and they know where they're going. It's funny watching all these folks still filing back in from halftime, and they're looking up at us as to say, how did we get the ball back, the LSU fans? Well, they've got it back on the interception, but they've got second down at 13 from the 31. And it's out for Blue. A little bit of room to run this time. 
Back out to the 38. Positive yardage. Makes the third down manageable. Third and about five coming up. Jeremy Hill again not playing tonight. Serving a suspension for an off-campus altercation. Terrence McGee has done duty in the backfield along with Kenny Hilliard and Alfred Blue tonight. Actually, it's third down and six now. They spot it closer to the 38-yard line. A single coverage down here, and Mettenberger looks left. Now he's going to throw on the run, and flags are down. Cadron Boone was clapping his hands out there, Ledge, and trying to get his quarterback's attention, thinking that he could beat the guy over here on the corner. And Jarvis Landry is limping off the field. Actually, he's not even going to get off the field. He's been their big play receiver, holding on TCU. Landry's had a, had a huge first half. There's six catches holding. and 81 yards. Defense, 17. 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic four stop. Sam Carter with a holding call. Time out for an injured player. We'll check on Jarvis Landry, the junior out of Convent, Louisiana, when we come back in a second. Jarvis Landry trying to walk off that injury and appears to be okay. He's been jogging and running on the sideline. And Holly says a quad strain is what they're calling it right now. He got up, but he was thinking that he was interfered with, and then he started limping after he... Had a problem with a guy in the secondary. Here's some problems in the secondary. It's McGee down the sideline, and he's gone. Touchdown. Terrence McGee, 52 yards for the score. Outstanding block by his left tackle, Lyle Collins, and also Kadron Boone, number 86, the wide receiver. Watch 86 pin his guy on the sideline. Collins gets the big block. Boone gets a block on Kevin White. And then the burst. Wide receivers have to block downfield. And when I saw this guy in the practice field, Terrence McGee, on Wednesday, you could tell he's got some real burst to him, and he's shot out of there on that one. Connor Neighbors, the fullback, took out two guys on the inside. 52-yard touchdown run. So after the interception, McGee caps a 66-yard drive on just three plays. Touchdown, LSU. Do you know what? Remember Gary Patterson told Holly at halftime, we got to do a better job on defense getting off the field in passing situation. They got the holding call on Sam Carter. They extended the drive, automatic first down, and the next play... LSU gets the long run. So now the Tigers have 10 points off two TCU turnovers. The dropped kick return by Carter turned into a field goal. And the interception by Collins turned into a 52-yard touchdown. Hairston to kick. David James, B.J. Catalan back deep. A 100 yard kickoff return for a score tonight. He's got an opportunity here from about the one yard line. And he's a good looking return guy as he gets it out to the 23 yard line. We check in with Holly. Well, that very unusual sequence of events to end halftime when the uh, Big Ten official referee John O'Neill came out and he said that he's got a statement. He has actually handed out a statement or they have for him that says, when a helmet comes off and that's the only thing that stops the clock, that's an opportunity for a 10-second runoff under one minute of either half. In this case, we had two things stop the clock, the helmet off and an incomplete pass. As a result, that does not qualify for the 10-second runoff. But I appreciate the transparency. I've never had a referee statement handed to me at half. I appreciate that. <laughs> and it's straightened out for Coach Miles, too. He'll figure it out at the end of the game. Boykin in at quarterback. Trying to make something happen. And this is what he can do very well. Out to the 34-yard line. We sort of set the story last year when Casey Baja went out after four games of the season. This guy, they were warming him up, Boykin, that is, to be a tailback. Yeah. And in within four days, they put him in a game at quarterback, threw a bunch of interceptions, but then a couple weeks later, came back and threw four yeah. touchdown passes. 
actually played pretty well, you know, under the circumstances. Had a couple back-to-back -back games where he threw four touchdowns in each game. Played well on the road. And he's in the game now because they've struggled so much offensively. The quarterback run threat gives something a different way to try to attack this LSU defense. They fake the end around. He'll keep it, put his head down, and he's got the first down. Up to the 34-yard line. So that's what Javon Boykin, the sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas, can do. And there's his numbers from a year ago. Pretty impressive when pressed into duty the way he was. Now, he's not going to fool LSU's defense. They've had plenty of time to prepare for both quarterbacks. They anticipated they see both. But when the quarterback is a running threat, it changes the dynamics of your defense. Boykin, quick throw, a little bit low, but he did complete it out to the 38-yard line. Pick up a four. So they said his offseason, he became more polished as a passer. I just think the problem for TCU right now is they, they don't have a deep threat. They don't have somebody that scares LSU's defense. And so the corners are right up on the receivers. There's a lot of press coverage, and they're not afraid of getting beat deep. Here's the option. The pitch with the left hand got it out there, but a nice open field stop by Craig Austin. And a gain of only two. Austin, one of the leaders of that defense, a fifth-year senior. Todd talked about the size back there. He's 6'2 and 210 pounds. Well, you have to have safeties that are big and physical in the SEC because when you want to beat Alabama, you've got to be able to tackle their backs, and safeties have to be great tacklers in a league like that. It's a little different in the Big 12. Boykin pumped and out through behind Ladarius Brown. I think we're going to get a rough in the passer, though. Ego Ferguson, an unnecessary penalty because that was an incompletion. Roughing the passer, defense number nine. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, we saw a penalty by TCU extend to drive for the Tigers. Now a penalty by Ego Ferguson. Could have easily pulled off on that. Didn't need to hit the quarterback. The ball was clearly gone. Yeah, he took about a step and a half. Yep. It's a good call. And that takes it all the way down to the LSU 45-yard line. TCU with Javon Boykin in at quarterback. And here's a quarterback draw. Cuts it to the outside. And got good yardage before he's run out of bounds. See, the reason that a quarterback run changes your offense and changes what you have to do defensively is now you, you, you pick up extra blockers. Right. Because instead of handing the ball off the quarterback being, uh, you know, not accounted for, now you have to account for him as a runner, and that gives you extra blockers, and you get more man-on-man -man blocking. Catalan ball out. A little problem with the exchange there. I don't know if Boykin wanted to give it to Catalan and he didn't take, or the other way around. They'll have a little chat about that mesh play. Well, a little indecision, I think, by Boykin. You know, you either have to make that decision to pull it out and run it or go ahead and keep it in the belly. And that time it looked like it was a little bit of indecision. And that's why the ball ended up on the ground. Very big third down for TCU, trailing by 13 here with under 10 to go in the third quarter. Boykin has time, Good. fires, and caught. And a first down. Down at the 32-yard line. He put some pepper on that one. Good read, good hard throw into the middle of the field to Brandon Carter. And again, lost in going for the contact instead of the football, not able to jar it loose. Boykin, quick throw over the middle. And he's got a nice little rhythm going right now. That's to Deontay Gray. There's some new blood in the backfield. Deontay Gray and Aaron Green. We got Gray and Green in with Boykin. So, uh, much different backfield. Right now, it's empty again for Trevon. And this one's thrown behind Aaron Green. Green, a transfer from Nebraska. And another third down coming up. They picked up their last one. 
lot of new bodies in there, including Liston B as a wide receiver. Casey Baja is just looking on now as his sophomore understudy has moved TCU down inside the LSU 30. Fly sweep. Catalan got the corner. And Catalan scores for the second time tonight. This one on the ground from 26 yards. Again, it's the threat of the quarterback run. That held some of those linebackers inside. They didn't know if Boykin was going to keep it or if he was going to give it to Catalan. Good execution that time. No hesitation by Boykin. And a big touchdown for TCU. Over Crum in for the point after. And it's good. TCU just when it looks very bleak for them after that long touchdown run by LSU. They get one of their own. B.J. Catalan's having himself quite a game here at at and Stadium. 26-yard touchdown run. And Gary Patterson's Horn Frogs again right back in it. 23-17 in the Cowboys Classic as we take a look at our TCU's finding success tonight. Brought to you by Expedia, Mr. Blackledge. Well, they're finding success with Trevon Boykin in. He carried the ball four times for 15 yards. And on this play, you're going to see four guys that are affected by the quarterback. They don't know if he's going to run it or if Catalan's going to get it. They kind of froze a little bit. Catalan got two good blocks by his wide receivers out there. Brandon Carter with a nice block. Colby listed me with another block, but it was the, the, the indecision by the LSU defense whether to tackle the quarterback or stay for the quarterback that made the play. Albert Crohn's kickoff. We go to Odell Beckham Jr. Two yards deep. And he'll bring it out. And Beckham down the sideline. Another nice return. We had some great returns tonight by both teams. We check in with Reese Davis. Brad, time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Ally Bank. Clemson and Georgia on ABC. Taj Boyd finds Sechinger for the touchdown. They initially ruled him out of bounds. Replay correctly overturned that call. 38-28, but the dogs are in Tiger territory just under seven minutes to go. All right, Reese, keep us posted. Great game going on in Death Valley. Here, more lower scoring, but some big plays tonight in Arlington at AT&T Stadium. Jarvis Landry, by the way, is out there with Zach Mettenberger and company, so he's apparently all right. He's been their leading receiver tonight. TCU's defense looking fired up by what their offense finally helped them out with. Davion Pearson and Jonathan Anderson in on the tackle. Now again, this, this defense has always been good under Gary Patterson. And last year, in the first year of the Big 12, they led in six categories. They were 16th nationally in total defense, and that's in a conference where they had to face five offenses that were ranked in the top 13 in all of college football. So they made that transition pretty well. The second closest defense in the Big 12 was like 43 yeah. yards behind them. Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Play action, Mettenberger zips it out complete. Odell Beckham slides on his backside to hold on to the pass and a first down at the 46. These receivers, though, Beckham and Landry yeah. are really in sync, it seems like, or they they're are. getting wide open, one of the two. Well, they're talented. I mean, they, you've got to respect their speed. They're strong. And they're catching the ball more consistently so far tonight. But I, again, they, they had this kind of camp, and they have great chemistry with Mettenberger right now. McGee follows his fullback, puts his head down, and he is stood up by Olabode. And we check in with Holly. Well, Zach Mettenberger really worked hard in the offseason to develop that chemistry with his wide receivers that we're seeing tonight. During June, they threw three times a week. During July, they upped it to four times a week. But they'd go out and do seven on seven. And then camp started. So they've been working all summer trying to get that seamless transition down. And, you know, they had some drops last year they were plagued by. But so far tonight, it looks like that chemistry and that extra hard work is paying off. All to his wide receivers, all 11 completions. And second down from the 48-yard line. Play fake to Hilliard. Mettenberger loads and going long. Beckham's out there, double coverage zone. It's knocked down by Barrett. 
and Kevin White came all the way across to help him out. And both guys are down, White and Becker. Officials timeout for an injured player. Uh, this ball was in held for a long time. Verrett, you see the closing speed gets in there. He's got help coming over the top. It looks like maybe Kevin White with a hip when he landed uh, right on the helmet, I think, and that might be where the injury is to both guys. Odell Beckham had Kevin White's hip land right on his face mask. And he's checking his jaw to make sure everybody's in the everything's in the right spot. And Kevin White's checking his hip on the far sideline to make sure he doesn't have any Odell's teeth in his hip. Ugh. And he's they're working on his knee actually on the sideline, not his hip. And he has made some four or five really good plays tonight. And that was just trying to help out Verrett in that case, because Verrett was the man in coverage on Odell Beckham. And he must have a split in his tongue or his lip. And again, there's the hip meeting the helmet on the landing. And neither guy came out of that in very good shape. Well, now you have a third down and eight situation without one of your key guys in the play. If I was TCU now, I'd definitely double Landry and make Zach Mettenberger find somebody else to throw to. Kevon Gamble is the guy that's coming in to take Kevin White's spot. White trying to walk it off on the sideline. It's third down and eight. Mettenberger fires down the middle, completes. And this is Boone, another big target. And that's his first catch, yeah. good for 14 yards. And Boone was working against Verrett, you know, so you would think maybe you stay away from their best guy. They went right after Verrett. Now, Boone got away with a yeah. push off. Sure he did. definitely got away with a little shove to create separation. But a nice throw again by Mettenberger on third down. So they're inside the 40, trying to answer TCU's touchdown run. LSU leading by six. As we approach six minutes remaining third quarter. Play action, Mettenberger fires out of the flat to the fullback, Neighbors, and he's brought down in the open field. Nice tackle out there defensively by TCU. Well, we've, we've seen Blue with a couple good runs. We've saw the long touchdown by McGee, but this is also where they do miss Jeremy Hill because he was their most dominant back down the stretch the last seven games of the year. He was their go-to guy. Average over five yards per carry. 10 touchdowns in the last seven games, and he is a big physical back, and uh, they don't have that sledgehammer type guy right now. Again, a quick play fake, the throw out to Landry, and he's gonna fight his way for another first down. And his helmet came off, but was it pulled off? That's what he said. Well, yeah, I think they need a few tighter chin straps, too. This was a nice instinctive play by Landry to spin back to the outside. He felt the linebacker to his inside. He spun outside, and that's why he got the first down. He knew where the pressure was coming from inside and spun out for the first. So he'll miss a play. They put Boone back in there to take his spot. From the 28, first down. Draw play, Blue, big opening in the middle. After Blue to the 15. A 13-yard run again by After Blue. They've been running to the left side quite a bit. This time they go to the right side. Copeland with a beautiful block on the middle linebacker, Marcus Mallett. And again, Blue's not a, he's not a guy who's going to try to make you miss. He's going to lower those shoulder pads and run north and south. Big target. Here's your red zone situation. As Todd and I said, keep it out of the red zone and score from longer range. You won't have the problem. They're going to try here to score through the air and overshot Landry, the intended receiver. Check in with Holly. TCU DB Kevin White jogging back out onto the field right now for that collision with Odell Beckham. The athletic training staff has cut up some kind of a white padding. They put it on his right hip where he took brunt of that fall. He's put it on. He jogged a little bit on the sideline, and now he's back out there on the field. 
Is the tenth play of the drive coming up for LSU. McGee who's got a touchdown run from long range tonight's back in there behind Mettenberger and he's going to get the carry. He might get another touchdown run out of it it's all the way down to the five. So ten more yards. McGee he's packed into that five nine frame too, about 215 pounds. He showed his speed on the outside on a 52 yard touchdown and showed some power inside there. You're seeing this offensive line assert itself a little bit. A couple new starters, a couple guys in some different positions. Now a new quarterback in Anthony Jennings, their backup quarterback, a freshman out of Marietta, Georgia. Very talented young guy on third and short in the ball game. And he gets it. Out of third down and inches basically got about a yard and a half. And now Mettenberger will come back in there. So Anthony Jennings at least got his feet wet, took a clean snap, and got a first down. He'll trot out. You mentioned Marietta, Georgia. His daddy Will was Pretty darn good defensive lineman for the Georgia Bulldogs back in the early 90s. They think he's going to be really special. They had a really high football IQ. Guy who loves the game, loves to study. Graduated early and was in there for spring football, and they just think he has a tremendous future. McGee now will be behind J.C. Copeland in the eye backfield on first and goal from the four. And it will be McGee. He only got about a yard. Nice job closing the door. Chucky Hunter. Hung in there, the 300 pounder and made the stop. Pearson got excellent penetration to number 57. He was the guy that forced the run to go back inside, right into the waiting arms of his partner in there, Chucky Hunter. Now they take out Copeland, they bring in the other fullback, counter neighbors. Five and a half minute drive for Les Miles group as we approach three minutes here remaining in the third quarter. This would be a tremendous answer to TCU's touchdown if. LSU can get one of their own. Tight end in motion. And play fake for Mettenberger. Had a man open in the flats momentarily. Now he has to throw it away and he almost had it picked off. Pressure coming from Dawson and Olibo is the closest guy to the ball at the end of it. And there you see he's mixing it up with Dylan Gordon, the tight end a little bit. We had two receivers on the play, neighbors and Dylan Gordon, and neither one was open. They were both covered pretty well. And again, the absence of an inside receiver, whether it be a tight end or a back right now for LSU, is, has limited them a little bit in their passing game, particularly when they get inside the red zone. Remember, all the red zone trips, with the exception of one, have ended with three. 14-play drive, and it's still third and goal at the three. They spread them out. But they keep it on the ground, and McGee, and he's in for the touchdown. His second of the night, one from long range, this one from three yards out. The problem you find yourself in when you spread it out sometimes, that opening in the middle. Well, Porter's going to get a block and watch Fidel Alexander pull through and get the kind of the trap block. And then the little or the shorter back at 5-9 just kind of gets low and runs right through the chute into the end zone. Delahousie in for the point after. And he's been perfect tonight. So LSU does have an answer. For what TCU did a few minutes ago, they go 68 yards in a little over six minutes. Terrence McGee. Second during the good hands field goal. That's all state makes contributions to participating university general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks, much like Della Hussey's a minute ago. To date, all states contributed more than three million dollars in scholarship money. The other kicker for LSU, Hairston, with the kickoff. And a yard deep catalog coming out with it. He's got two touchdowns tonight, one on the ground, one on a kick return, but this time he won't make the 20. Better coverage by LSU special teams. And they'll stop him around the 17 or 18 yard line. He's been a bright spot tonight though if there's going to be one for TCU number 23. I'm kind of wondering as you're a TCU fan and you haven't seen the new uniforms. The TCU's on the back of the helmet. The helmets are purple with red in it. We'll explain that in a minute, but it's another new Nike design uniform. 
that the uh, players are pretty excited about wearing tonight. There's a penalty, an illegal substitution. They had 12 guys on the field. Offense number 14, 12 men in formation. Five yard penalty, still first down. That doesn't help their cause. They'll back it up to the 12. That red streak on the helmets signifies when a horn toad gets, when a horn frog gets really, really upset, blood comes out of his eyes. So that's the red. Okay. That's yeah, pretty cool looking. Uh, I've had that same thing happen after being out too late the night before, but that's <laughs> the whole other story. <laughs> Empty backfield now again for Trevon Boykin. Joined in the backfield and giving off to Wayman James. And he doesn't get much. About three. Again, Todd has said it many times. They just don't have a big time receiver. They have a big player in Ladarius Brown at 6'4, 220, but they've only aimed about one pass at him tonight. And they don't have anybody that, that is threatening or can threaten the LSU defense. So they're squeezing everything. They're close to the line of scrimmage in the run game. And then they're right on top of the receivers in the pass. So they'd have nothing and no way to stretch the LSU defense. The only weapon so far has been the quarterback running the football. And here he's going to load and fire it into coverage and could have been caught though. Broken up but incomplete. Liston B had his hands on it and couldn't hold it. Jalen Mills made a play on the ball at the very end of the play. He waited until the perfect time to reach his hand in there and knock it out. This was a really good throw by Boykin. Ego Ferguson coming right in on him. It's a good throw by Boykin. But watch, the last minute, slips his hand in there, gets a hand on the football. A pretty darn good throw with Ego Ferguson yep. in your chin. Could have been, but it wasn't. So that's third and long. And having to take a timeout as TCU. And it's a problem they had early in the game, and now it crops up with. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Now Dick Sporting Goods kickoff weekend continues on Monday night. Reminder for you from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Paul Christ and the Panthers are making their Atlantic Coast Conference debut against a Seminole team that a lot of people think maybe could be the best in that conference. So they're playing with a freshman quarterback. Number 11 Florida State Pittsburgh Monday night 8 Eastern on ESPN. There's some good players in there. Wide receiver Rashad Green on the Bolitnikoff list, and he'll be playing against guys like Jason Hendricks on the other side of the ball. Paul Chris, former team, Wisconsin, had a big win today with their new football coach, Gary Anderson. And a shutout. I don't know how Arkansas did. Brett Bielema, who's the new guy there in the SEC. We've only got 42 games this weekend. It's hard to keep track of all of them. <laughs> That's just on our family of networks, folks. There's more games than that out there. Third down and 12. LSU showing blitz and just doing that caused a false start. Five yard penalty, still third down. Jamel Naff. That's a second penalty on him tonight. LSU hasn't blitzed much, but they just brought some extra guys up there. And number 77 couldn't hold on to that 325 pounds. Gary's got the glasses off, the visor off, the sweat still dripping. Up oh, there, we got everything back on. Third and a bunch from near the goal line. Boykin down the sideline. What a throw! And complete. Josh Dotson. That had to be exactly where it was, or it would have been out of bounds or incomplete or intercepted. Dotson is a transfer one from Wyoming. Beautiful throw right over Jalen Collins. Can't throw it any better. You know wow. a safety's coming over the top to help, and Collins is a big corner at 6-2. That was a beautiful throw. It was. First and the down. first big chunk play that TCU has gotten from their passing game. They needed 17 on third down, and they got 35. 74. Five yard penalty, still first down. Vitae picks up his second penalty on that right tackle spot. So just when they get a big gainer, they come back the other way five yards. Alapulabati 
by Ty. Yeah, big, they just call him Big V. <laughs> and the uh, 6'6, 310 pounder at the right tackle. Third penalty on this drive for TCU, though. You've got to eliminate those, or you're never going to beat a team like the LSU. I tell you, Catalan's got some moves. Yeah. Knocked off and cartwheels, somersaults his way out to the 49 yard line. And now a little jawing going on between those two guys. He's shifting, you know, he keeps his, his feet moving, he got good hip movement. And he uses that stiff arm pretty well. And the other thing that Boykin gives you is not just design quarterback runs, but if the protection breaks down and he can extend the play by scrambling, he can still throw on the move. Boykin over the middle. That should have been caught by Deontay Gray. Dropped it. DJ Welter, one of the linebackers, made sure he didn't hold on to it, but that could have easily been a first down, and that's third down and four. The coaches said, told us the other day about Boykin that, you know, when he was thrust into the position last year, there was no real backup. They had to take a wide receiver and make a backup quarterback. So he really didn't have to compete week in and week out. But then when Casey came back, it was heavy competition, and it made him better. He really, really responded to that in a positive way. Big third down. And he'll try to do it with his legs, and he's not going to get away from Ego Ferguson, who's had a big game. He had one roughing the passer penalty, but everything else been pretty positive for big number nine. Forcing the Ethan Perry punt that's upcoming. And that punt's going to have to wait. That's the end of the third quarter. Because we played three. And unless TCU can start to slow down LSU's ground game over Georgia and Death Valley in a thrilling game, 38-35. So the highest ranked team to lose so far, Georgia Bulldogs. Louisville playing tomorrow on ESPN at 3.30. This team can end over end knuckleball. And it takes the great bounce that he was looking for and down to near the one yard line. Perfect kick as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, I want to show you how that Georgia Clemson game ended. Georgia was rallying furiously. Aaron Murray went in to score, didn't get the onside kick. A huge play in this game, not to be forgotten. Georgia had an extra point range field goal, and they fumbled the snap on it during the second half. Difference in the game, three points. Wow. Georgia didn't have their regular kicker either. They missed the game under suspension, but if it was a bad snap, it might not have been any problem with his. But you got to have all three of those facets yeah. to snap the hold the kick, and they didn't get the chance for the kick. So three-point win for Clemson. And that's a big win for the ACC. Yes. Copeland trying to get it away from the shadow of the goal line, and really got back only the line of scrimmage. And that was a huge punt. And where it was down for TCU because we're at the point in the game where this TCU defense would look like they were starting to get a little bit worn down by this big LSU offensive line and tackling these backs but now pinning them all the way down on the one yard line it'll force LSU to be a little bit conservative and if they can get a three and out here which they've only had one the whole game so far they get great field position back for their offense. Hettenberger trying to draw them off sides. And the play goes on. Now the flag does fly in. Well, that's smart by Zach Mettenberger. That's really smart. I mean, you know you're going to be conservative here. Take a chance with your snap count. See if you can get a free five yards. And Davian Pearson. Offside, defense, number 57. Five yards from the previous spot. Still second out. I mean, he's listening to the quarterback instead of looking at the football. That's the ninth TCU penalty as well. So now they get a free five yards and a little more room to breathe down there. Sports Center, by the way, right now on ESPN News as it's midnight Eastern time, 11 o'clock here in Arlington, Texas. And the ball is out. Let's see who's got it. TCU had the great shot at it. No signal yet. Not a good exchange on the handoff, and still they're trying to separate everybody on the bottom of the pile. 
It is TCU football. I think Kevin White is the guy that came out of there with the football. He was out for a while and looked like a knee injury. He's back in the game. This was a bad exchange between Mettenberger and Alfred Blue. Looked like the ball was on his hip a little bit. Blue was not secure in the football and uh, a big play. It started with the punt, downing on the one, and now they get the turnover, and their offense in the best field position they've had all night. LSU's backs came into this game with 296 yeah. consecutive touches without putting it on the ground. Alfred Blue just did. He's the last guy to have fumbled in that streak, the aforementioned streak. Golden opportunity. Siobhan Boykin and TCU. First and goal at the six-yard line. He'll keep it himself, but he only got a yard. Well, that was played well by Roscoe. I mean, he kind of had both responsibilities. He read the quarterback and then quickly dove in and tripped him up. And he was in position to guard the back and the quarterback. He just showed the quickness of the defensive end, Roscoe. Second down and goal, 13-20, and the clock rolling at the LSU five-yard line. Trying to take advantage of the turnover. Low snap, rides it to James, gave it to James, James for the touchdown. And they do take advantage of the turnover and make it a score and make it a game again with 13.04 remaining. Stephen Bryant, the tight end number 49, gets a great block up top, holds his position. And again, it's that hesitation with the quarterback. Is he going to keep? Is he going to give it? Freezes the defense inside a little bit. And then good blocking on the perimeter by Bryant. Extra point is good. 13 and change remaining. LSU, a six-point lead. But a dropped ball at the six-yard line. Their first turnover. And two plays later, a good exchange from quarterback to tailback. Wayman is through with that two-play drive look like. Well, the guy you want to make miss is that guy right there, Jamaria Roscoe. And watch the first down play. He kind of baits Boykin to keep the ball, and then he slides back in to make the tackle. So the very next play, they do the same thing. Make that guy be wrong. Make him hesitate. This time he gives the ball to Catalan. And that little hesitation by Roscoe, not able to get out on the back, and that time they get the touchdown. And the kick. And it does make the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Reminder, only two races left until the chase for the cup. Jimmy Johnson looking to hold on to his lead. On the rest of the field, competition heating up at Atlanta Motor Speedway tomorrow. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Got a couple former champs there that are uh, kind of on the outside looking in, too. Uh -huh. Brad, Brad Kleslowski who won last year. Four-time champ Jeff Gordon. They both need either a win or a couple good finishes down the stretch here. They're going to be out of it. Good homework, brother. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a little inside. Uh, I got you an insider. Do. I got an inside the it, track. It's guy. probably one of those taste of the town joints you hang out. <laughs> First down at the 25. Play action. Mettenberger in trouble, and down he goes. Big play by Chris Hackett. Not a safety blitz. Well, unaccounted for. They moved the tight end away, and that left Hackett. Unaccounted for in the backside. Mettenberg didn't feel it, didn't see it, and a loss of yardage play on first down. Second sack of the night for TCU, and that came at a big time. Dropping Mettenberger back at the 17-yard line, a loss of eight. And they get LSU in a long yardage situation here and can force another punt. And I'm telling you, they're going to have a heck of a finish. That was a time when TCU's fans were sort of sitting on their hands thinking that LSU was taking over this ball game, but that's not happening right now. The noise has changed to the other purple fans. You know, and, it, and it really goes back to that punt that was downed on the one-yard line. It really flipped the field. It gave them a little momentum. It forced LSU to be a little conservative. And all of a sudden now, we have a much different football game. And here is the third and 15. 
And though Zach Mettenberger has got a big right arm, you don't want to make a mistake here. Not so bad to punt with 11 and a half minutes to go. Just don't throw one to the other team. Mettenberger loads and going deep. And broken up by Kevin White again. Who else intended for Boone? Well, you know what happens when you have an All-American like Jason Barrett, who had six interceptions to lead the Big 12, led the Big 12 and passes defended. That means the guy on the other side usually gets worked on quite a bit. And Kevin White has more than ably held up his own on the other side. I mean, he has made several big-time plays tonight against these LSU receivers. He might find some people not coming his way in the next few weeks. Second straight drive without a first down for LSU. Fumble the last one, and now here they are to punt. Randy Carter says, everybody just get out of the way. That one shanked. And TCU's going to have great field position. Gonna be, it's going to be on LSU's side of the 50. 48-yard line. Not a good punt. TCU with a short field and down six when we come back. SU territory for TCU, and Boykin comes up throwing. Back shoulder throw. Did he hold on? On the sideline. Nope. It'll be incomplete. Let's check in with Holly. During that last offensive series, defender Lamine Barrow of LSU made the entire defense get up off the bench, come over, and get together for a chat. He's wearing number 18. That was assigned to him because it's a signifying of leadership, stewardship, and he was the one that got this defense together and said, hey, we've got to stop this momentum now. They know the game is on the line, trying to get a stop here on this series. And he started at number 18 in honor of Matt Mock, who led them to a title in 03, first one in, since 1958. That was Nick Saban's LSU title that year. Here's James. Very short game. Got a couple. Anthony Johnson coming off the bottom of the pile. <laughs> That's some good sportsmanship. Big guy giving a little by guy a tap on the helmet and vice versa. Now this is the biggest third down of the game yep. for TCU. Four wide receivers for Javon Boykin. Snap again low in the shotgun. Scrambles to his left, running for his life. Going to try to get it with his feet, and did. Great run by Boykin. First down. And in today's world of college football, if you don't have an NFL caliber quarterback, a pocket guy who's an accurate thrower all the time, you better have a mobile guy because defenses are too good. And linemen are too physical and fast, and you better have a guy who can extend plays, and that's exactly what Boykin did there for a first down. Trevon needed eight, he got nine, and now he throws it on a crossing route inside the 30, complete. And that's the freshman, Slanina. Out of East Bernard, Texas. Freshman they like a lot. And they're gonna move the sticks again. It's just the threat that Boykin presents to the LSU defense. That's why the field is opening up a little bit for him. And they said first down. They didn't get a first down, and they don't on that play either. It's going to bring up a third down and a long two. Daniil Hunter made the stop from his defensive end spot. And he's a Texas native, too, out of Katy, Texas. Got a wonder down here, Todd, if they're in. Four down territory. Third down along two. Yeah. Under ten minutes to go. Fake the fly sweep. Give it to Catalan straight up the middle. And he's got the first down. Tell you what, if TCU somehow wins this game and comes from behind, that guy is going to be the guy that did it for him. Had a sensational night. Touchdown on the ground and one on a 100 yard kickoff return. From the 26, Boykin in trouble and lost the football. LSU's got it. No, it squirted out again. Looked like they were all over it. 
with Quentin Thomas. And it came out of the pile again, and I don't know who has it now. You know, I thought Quentin Thomas did the right thing by not trying to scoop it up and run with it, but he still wasn't able to safely recover it. A missed opportunity for LSU's defense there because the ball was out. They had the first shot at it, and Quentin Thomas couldn't get it. And to add to the problems, Roscoe is face down. <laughs> he was scrambling for the loose ball as well. Boykin right here had it stripped in the backfield. And that was Roscoe who got a hand on it. And then Thomas tried to cover it. Roscoe tried to get back over there. And there you see at the bottom of the pile, Vitae, I think, is the guy that finally ended up with it. It's going to go down as a loss of 13 yards, but more importantly, TCU gets to keep the football. And we will check on Roscoe when we come back in a minute. Line. It's second down and 23. Play action. Boykin wants to throw back the other way, scrambling for his life. Trying to run away from Johnson, got away from him. And he goes all the way to the 32 yard line, so he got a decent gain out of it. Picked up seven. And Johnson hurt now. And he's going to take a knee. He was giving chase. Uh, Trevon Boykin. Officials timeout for an injured player. And that's two starting defensive linemen in back-to-back -back plays that have hit the deck for LSU. You know, when I was over there on Wednesday, he did not practice, had a little bit of an elbow issue. I think they were mainly just giving him a day off. He had a, a really good camp, really worked hard. John Chavis said he had an excellent camp, got that weight down. I think he's just really tired at the end of this play, quite frankly. I mean, that, that was a lot of running for him to do. Yep. He landed a little awkward on the ground. John Chavis also told us that he didn't know if he'd ever had a defensive lineman work harder on a snap-to-snap -snap and day-to-day -day basis than number nine he has. Yeah, it is his left shoulder. And that would be... A huge loss if that was uh, anything serious. Meanwhile, you can see the eye, left eye of Roscoe's kind of swollen and red. He'll probably be wearing one of those visor masks over his face mask next week. Third down at 17. With 8.39 and the clock rolling. Pahal's in at quarterback. They need a big throw. We got him a crossing route to Catalan, but he's not going to get there. It's going to be fourth down and five or six. They're in the field goal range with that throw. Obercrom has hit from 53. Obercrom has hit from 53 last year in his freshman season, so. This is well within his range, but does Gary Patterson want more? Yeah, they'll come out and try to make it a three-point game. Jaden Obercrow. So I think you make that decision if you feel like your defense has settled down and, and has really tightened up against LSU's offense. And I think that's what he feels right now. Let's make it a three-point game. We don't need to be desperate. Obercrow, kick on the way. High and deep and good. And the Arlington, Texas native on his home turf has made it a three-point game. LSU now clinging to a 30 to 27 advantage. Two quarterbacks started the game. He's done well in the second half to help his team back to within three at 30-27. But LSU has helped the cause too on their last couple of possessions. A fumble and then a very bad punt. That's led to 10 unanswered TCU points. Odell Beckham Jr. on the kick return. Odell Beckham in a foot race. He's not going to win it, but he's all the way to the 22 yard, uh, 27 yard line. You can almost feel that coming for yeah. him. 75 yards. Well, this TCU kick coverage team. 
has the nation's longest streak of games without giving up a kickoff return for a touchdown. That was in jeopardy there for a few moments. But nonetheless, a big boost for LSU when they needed it. They've had bad field position. They've turned the ball over. And now their special teams have given them a gift wrap situation here with field position. The gift wraps at the 25-yard line. With a three-point lead and 7.24 remaining. Out comes Zach Mettenberger and company. At the TCU 25. McGee's the tailback. He gets the call. Almost looked like he lost the handle for a second, but no gain on the play. I mentioned LSU. The reason this is only a three-point game, they fumbled first time in the last 332 rushes. Out the play. blue, put it on the ground on a bad exchange for Mettenberger. And then three plays, minus five yards, got that short punt. That led to a field goal. So ten straight points for the Horned Frogs. And Davion Pearson is the TCU player that's on the turf. Just reset the game clock to 7.08. hard-hitting night down there in the trenches on both sides as LSU on the last series had two of their starters go down and uh, Davion Pearson a sophomore out of Oklahoma City is still down at the 24 yard line and his head coach is going to come out to have a look Gary Patterson who's built this program into uh, national power. They're not that far removed from that 13 and 0 season when they won the Rose Bowl. And that was a big boost for them. And now this is not their home stadium, obviously. This is where the Cowboys play. But I tell you what, their renovated home on their campus is gorgeous. Yes, sir. John Lewis will come in and take Davion Pearson's spot on the defensive front for TCU. Meanwhile, LSU has a second down and 10. Trying to take advantage of Odell Beckham Jr.'s long kickoff return. But they definitely are thinking, let's get seven and have a 10 point lead. Because a field goal still leaves the door open for TCU to win with a touchdown. Mettenberger in the shotgun. McGee on the carry follows his blockers nicely and got it down to the 20. ECU is picked preseason third in the Big 12. LSU, in most people's opinion, or the preseason choices, picked third in the SEC West. Third down and five. Mettenberger. Landry makes a great catch in traffic. Touchdown. I don't know if Zach Mettenberger did this on purpose, but he kind of threw it to the back arm of Landry. Sam Carter was in perfect position to cover this if the ball is thrown where you expect it to be thrown. But the ball was thrown not a back shoulder throw, but a back arm throw. And because of that, Landry was able to catch it with his right hand and then get into the end zone. So they were looking for seven. And they get seven. Extra point is good. The lead goes to ten. 6.09 remaining. Time for tonight's good hands play. Brought to you by All States. This is a strong receiver in Jarvis Landry who has extremely strong hands. He's got a guy draped over his body. He's able to keep his concentration on the ball and not only make the catch, but turn it into a touchdown. He's got strong hands and Strong fortitude. I'm not quite sure where he caught that, but <laughs> he pulled it in. 
He's got eight receptions tonight for 109 yards and now a touchdown. Four have come on third down. All four converted into first downs and in that case converted into a touchdown. Boy, big play. Two big plays there. Landry's catch and of course the other side, Odell Beckham Jr.'s kick return. And those two guys sit side by side, trying to cool off a little bit on the LSU bench, but they've just given their team a huge boost with 6.09 remaining. Now can Catalan get his hands on one? Well, I think I'd kick this on the ground. I'd quit kicking to that guy. We'll kick it out of the end zone. That's deeper kick and goes to James, and he will have to take a knee. Don't forget Monday night. Next Sporting Goods kickoff weekend will continue. AC say debut of the Pitt Panthers taking on Seminoles of Florida State, ranked 11th in the country. That is Monday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Anthony Johnson and Jamaria Roscoe are both back on the front wall for LSU. They know they're in a dogfight here. Although the lead is now 10. And he's going to that quarterback. Again, the snap from center was low. But he delivers, completes about an eight yard gain to Josh Dotson. So you're thinking right now, if you're TCU with the football with six minutes left in the ball game, just under six, you got to score twice. And so you may only get two possessions, this one and one more. So if you get a field goal on this one, that's okay. You don't have to get a touchdown on this one, but you better make sure you get yourself in scoring position because if you do get it back again, you may not have very much time. Remember, they're down to two timeouts as well. Boykin going to go deep. He's got a man out there and broken up. The very last moment, it looked like it was going to be a relatively easy catch for Slanina, who was open, but that opening closed in a hurry for that LSU secondary. Well, I think Mikey Eugene maybe got a tip on it, and because the ball hung a little bit long after the deflection, that enabled Craig Lawson to come over and jar it loose from Slanina. Good help by the safety, helping out his underneath corner. Now three receivers to Boykin's right. A third down and two. They need the first down just to get the drive continued here. Five and a half minutes remaining. And in and out of the hands of Brandon Carter. Now it's fourth and two. Boykin very slow getting up after that play. It's back to back plays by Mikey Eugene, pretty strong. And Boykin hit the side of the knee a little bit at the end of the play. And on fourth down, they're going to have to punt. They didn't get the first down. They weren't able to keep the drive alive, trailing by 10 now. And that's, as Todd said, how many more times are you going to touch it? You might not get it again. Ethan Perry to kick. And Odell Beckham, the guy that did the damage on the kick return. They'll watch this one bounce and let it go as it drops down at the 22, maybe the 23 yard line. You know, a lot of people coming in, partner, said, TCU, you and I agreed with this, and so did Holly. We're a good enough team to stay with LSU yeah. this entire ball game. And up until a couple of minutes ago, they were within three points. Yeah. And that long kick return on the touchdown kind of turned it. And now LSU, if they can play LSU football, can kind of grind right. this last five minutes out. Well, and that's what they have to do right now. They they don't need to score again. You know, with, with TCU not scoring on that possession, now they want to work clock. They need to get a couple first downs and use as much clock as they can. That's what their thinking is right now at this point in the ball game. They've got the big hosses in there right now. Everybody in tight as they'll run the football straight up the middle. Getting across the 25 close to the 26 was McGee who's had a nice night. Yeah. Well you, you consider McGee the night he's had Kenny Hilliard hasn't played all that much. Alfred Blue had a good game except the fumble and Jeremy Hill didn't play. Right. Yeah, and it's obvious that McGee is the guy that they feel most comfortable with right now because this is crunch time and he's been out there the last couple possessions. LSU has rushed for 178 yards. 
against a defense that was first in the Big 12 last year, allowing only 105 a game. Of course, 52 of that was McGee on the touchdown run. And here he comes on a little counter. And again, they're just chewing up clock. TCU with two timeouts remaining. We're down to 425. If they could pick up this third down, the Tigers, they would be in excellent shape. I expect a lot of movement by this TCU defense. They'll show one thing at the snap the ball. You'll see guys moving and angling towards the football, trying to pinch in there and get something behind the backfield. The third and five with under four to go now. And Alfred Blue in, in the tailback spot. Let Mettenberger throw one. Sideline, back shoulder, beauty to Beckham. First wow. down. They brought Blue in because he's the older guy and better at pass protection. But this is undefendable. I mean, this is perfect position and coverage by Kevin White. But if a quarterback throws it there, you can't make a play on it. I mean, that's the, the offense wins when you throw it like that. That's having confidence in your arm. That was perfect. To the 46 yard line. And now Mettenberger is over 250 throwing the football. And see, they'll stay in the huddle as long as they can right now. The play clock is just now going to 10 seconds. You want to milk the clock. You don't want to lose your momentum. You don't want to lose your aggressiveness. They're going to have to call timeout yeah. now. Yeah. There's what confusion. <laughs> Timeout, LSU. Again, remember, Cam Cameron, this is his first game as the offensive timeout. coordinator. He's up in the press box. He's communicating with Frankie Wilson, the running backs coach, and, and they're sending, signaling plays into Zach Mettenberger. So that the mechanics of that obviously is something they're going to have to work on and get better as the season goes on because they've had too many snafus with that here in this first ball game. The clock stopped with a timeout with 312 remaining. LSU wanted to get over this hurdle in the Cowboys Classic before meeting UAB and Kent State. And then the SEC schedule starts with Auburn. Big game at Georgia on the 28th. Georgia may or may not be fifth ranked at that time. They're going to fall, but could regroup if they could beat South Carolina next week. And then another road game at Mississippi State. And you see the rest of the roll. And down at the end, Alabama. Texas A&M and Arkansas. And this one would be a nice way to start the season for LSU. And Alfred Blue just pushing his blockers on the backside to help him through. And a 13-yard pickup again. And so Blue and McGee are both in that 85 to 90 degree, uh, 85 to 90 yard at night. Be nice if it was 90 degrees outside. Still about 100 out there. And the clock winds its way down to 250. Zach Mettenberger taking his time, saying, "Okay, guys, just stay here until we absolutely have to get up there and snap it." So you want the timing of leaving the huddle, going to the line of scrimmage, snapping the ball, and running the play to be the same. So you just stay in the huddle a little bit longer if you want that play clock to go down, but keep that part of the timing as consistent as possible. Again, Blue fumbled earlier in the ball game, holding on to this one, spins his way down inside the 30. I know, I know that uh, a lot of people and writers and reporters have said that LSU would be the third team in the SEC West this year. I, I don't agree with that. I think they're still the second best team along with Alabama. I think they're better than Texas A&M. They beat A&M last year in College Station. They get them at home this year. And that's later in the year. I, I just think defensively, you know, as these younger guys and inexperienced guys play a little bit longer, this is going to be another outstanding LSU defense before pretty long. A&M gave up 31 points today to their defense. Fullback, neighbors straight ahead. And TCU is going to take one here. Second timeout, 30 they're, seconds. They're down to one timeout with a minute 38 to go. We mentioned Georgia losing to Clemson tonight. Yet another tough one next week, but they will be between the hedges as they'll take on South Carolina. South Carolina winner over North Carolina on Thursday night is our 
Dick Sporting Good kickoff weekend started on Thursday night. And Jadavian Clowney and company. Aaron Murray, Jadavian Clowney said at SEC Media Days. Aaron Murray, I can see the fear in his eyes when he plays us. Aaron Murray says, I'm not really scared of him. I just haven't had great games. And Mark Rick said, you know what? I think there's a lot of people who are probably scared to play against Jadavian yeah. Clowney. He didn't have the greatest night against North Carolina the other night, but that'll be the matchup. And uh, South Carolina won't have lost any in their ranking area, but Georgia will after losing to Clemson today. Game day will have Notre Dame and Michigan, both winners today. Those are the two night games for you on ABC and ESPN next week. Actually, our games in the afternoon at 4.30. And pulling his head down and plowing his way for another first down is Terrence McGee. So McGee, 95 yards on 13 carries tonight and two touchdowns. One short range and one from 52 out. TCU's only got one timeout, one more way to stop this. Well, I think the best thing that Zach Mettenberger did tonight was passing on third down. He was 8 of 14 throwing on third down, and all eight completions went for first down. And total third down conversions, 13 out of 19. Yeah. Pretty impressive. You know, the question will be, when does Les Miles decide that he brings Jeremy Hill back? But the good news for him is that his number three guy, Terrence McGee, showed that he can carry the rock for him when they need him as well. And Gary Patterson apparently is going to let that last time out go by the boards. And we're down to 30 seconds. He walked out on the field as if he was going to take it and then backpedaled. He's still a couple yards out of the field. Standing at the 30 yard line. Tough start for them when they got to within three points. But LSU able and we said Todd you know if they can chew up the last five minutes of clock. They don't have to score again. Right. How about the last 515 and taking the last knee and winning the first game. Good football game. Two good teams that you'll hear from as the season goes along. But in this case the SEC takes care of business over the Big 12 in the Cowboys Classic here in Arlington. LSU has had good success in this facility and they do again tonight. Final score. 37 27 number 12 over number 20. That's going to wrap it up for us. We'll see you next week between the hedges. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Todd and Holly Brad Nessler from Arlington. Good night everybody.